Divine Mother, Divine Mother Heavenly, Father, Heavenly Father, Dearest Friend, dearest friend Beloved God, beloved God great, masters, great Masters, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Babaji Krishna, Babaji Krishna Lahiri Mahashaya, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Beloved Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, with deep love and gratitude, we bow before you. We thank you for your divine friendship through your great saints. Awaken within us our own potential to become a saint, to become a Christ-like friend to all. We are yours. Be thou ever ours. Om. Peace. Amen. So good morning and welcome again to our friends joining us in person. Nice to see you, Sadi Devi. And our friends joining us online. We have this beautiful festival of divine friendship. And it's interesting because that prayer Yoganandaji gave us to call to God as our father, our mother, our friend, and our beloved. These four intimate ways we can have relationships with others. And today we're going to highlight that spirit of divine friendship. So we have a mixture. It's a hybrid, just like it's a, a hybrid world. We have a, a mixture of live, in person, and also uh, pre-recorded offerings. So Sherry is going to begin with an introduction, and uh, then Dharma Devi and I are going to share a song and a little bit, and then we'll have Chela Ramurti. Uh, Paul will be sharing with us some gentle stretches and guided meditation and Padma and Arnab will be sharing letters and chanting and Divine, uh, Dharma Devi will share some chanting as well. So, Welcome to Ananda LA's Divine Friendship Festival 2021. As we begin to embrace each other in person again, today we gather to celebrate the blessing of divine friendship. As Master Paramahansa Yogananda once said, by being true to yourself and a true friend to others, you gain the friendship of God. By having friends who you know will be there for you through thick and thin, we are truly blessed by God through them and share God's love with them. To continue in Master's words, the divine has loved me as mother, as father, and as friend, behind all friends. I searched for that one friend behind all friends that one lover whom I now see glimmering in all your faces. And that friend never fails me. Today we will share our inspiration of divine friendship through song, through guided meditation, and master's words. Without further ado, we will begin with Swami's song, Divine Friendship.
Friendship is the most precious possession of your life and the happiest thing you feel. <laughs> this is a poem by Master called Friendship. So it's a beautiful poem. I invite you to take it as a visualization in your heart. Is friendship the weaving of the red strings of two hearts? Is it the blending of two minds into a spacious one mind? Is it the spouting of love fonts together to strengthen the rush of love on droughty souls? Is it the one rose grown twixt twin mind branchlets of one compassionate stem? Is it the one thinking in two bodies? Or is it like two strong stallions, disparate in color and mean, pulling the chariot of life together to the single goal with one mind sight? Is friendship founded on equalities or inequalities? Is it built on diverse stones of differences? Is friendship the unthinkingly agreeing, the hand in hand blind walking of two souls, foolishly rejoicing in their united folly, falling at last into a pit of delusionment? Friendship is noble, fruitful, holy. When two separate souls march in difference, yet in harmony, agreeing and disagreeing, glowingly improving diversely with one common longing to find solace in true pleasure, where ne'er the lover seek self-comfort at cost of the one beloved, then in that garden of selflessness, fragrant friendship perfectly flowers. For friendship is a hybrid born of two souls, the blended fragrance of two unlike flowers blown together in love's caressing breeze. Friendship is born from the very core of secret inexplicable likings. Friendship is the fountain of true feelings. Friendship grows in both likeness and difference. Friendship sleeps or dies in familiarity and decays in lusts of narrow-eyed selves. Friendship grows tall and sturdy in the soil of oneness in body, mind, and soul. Demands deceptions, sordid sense of possession, courtesy's lack, narrow self-love, suspicion. These are cankers which eat at the heart of friendship. Ah, friendship, flowering, heaven-born plant, nurtured art thou in the soil of measureless love, in the seeking of soul progress together, by two who would smooth the way, each for the other. And thou art watered by attentions of affection and the tender dews of inner and outer sweetness, of the inmost selfless heart's devotion. Ah, friendship, where this, thy soul-born flowers fall, there on that sacred shrine of fragrance, the friend of all friends craves to come and remain. Where are you going, my little one? In hope these empty streets I wend. I've seen a star rise in the east, and I'm looking for a friend. To ru lu ru lu ru lay to ru lu ru lu ru lay Where are you going, good shepherd folk? From a lowly valley we ascend a wondrous vision sent us here. We are looking for a friend to rule, 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 r
You learned men, where are you going? Our soul's long journey we would end. Therefore we've come to Bethlehem. We are looking for a friend. To Good people, let me come with you. Perhaps he's just around this bend. But whether near or far, I too have been looking for a friend to Hi, my name is Chela, and I was asked to share one of my favorite quotes by Paramhansa Yogananda about friendship. And so originally I wanted to draw one of those little flip books where you draw a stick figure on each page, each page a little bit different than the one before it, so that as you flip the book really quickly, it almost looks like you're watching a little motion picture. But I decided that was going to be a little bit too difficult. So instead, I I'm asking you to please visualize what I'm going to describe. And I'm going to describe three different memes or cartoons and I'll supply the caption that goes underneath each one. So the first image is of a homeless person sitting on a bench somewhere and they look cold and hungry and maybe a little bit lost and someone walks up to them and hands them a large basket full of really healthy food. And the caption underneath that image is, Grateful friends are the Lord in disguise looking after his own. And now the second image is of somebody sitting on a couch. And they look like they're clearly going through a challenge, a very difficult, sad time in need of support. So someone comes and sits down next to them and just wraps their arm around them and sits and listens and is a very good friend. And the caption underneath that image is, Grateful friends are the Lord in disguise looking after his own. And the final image is of a little car driving down the street. And there's a little stick figure driving, to, driving the car behind the wheel. And he pulls over and opens the door and lets in another stick figure. And that stick figure really had to be somewhere important. And he had no way to get there. So this was a beautiful random act of kindness, one friend serving another person. So what I really love about, oh, the caption under that one is, Grateful friends are the Lord in disguise looking after his own. And what I really love about this Yogananda quote is that I feel like he's talking about all of us. We are all very small but beautiful aspects of divine grace, channels of his love and kindness and light. And as we go through our days and we serve each other, we are acting for him, whether we are receiving love from someone else or we see an opportunity to serve somebody, we are serving as pure channels of his grace in disguise. So today as you go through your day, I hope you notice all of those experiences where somebody is either serving you or you have the opportunity to serve someone and know in your heart that you are an aspect of divine grace in disguise serving as a pure channel of love and light. Have a great day. Bye. Hello, friends. I'm going to share some thoughts with you this morning on our topic of friendship. They're drawn from Yogananda's writings, and some of them are actually his words. For more of his writings on this subject, please check out his book, How to Love and Be Loved. What do you imagine the Paramahansa Yogananda declared 
to be the most valuable possession that you could ever have. Friendship is an expression of God's love for us. God manifests the divine love through the love of our friends. Master declares that our friends, those whom God has sent to us, constitute the most valuable possessions a human being can ever have. The nature of friendship is God's love shining through the eyes of people who love us. Through them, God is calling us home to a place where we find ourselves no longer selfish, no longer thinking about number one, eagerly serving the friends around us. Because of the light filling friendship, we leave selfishness behind. The operating power behind friendship is divine love. Divine love creates a bond of spiritual attraction. And that magnetism results in friendship at its highest level. True friendship is centered in divine love and has its foundation in service, flowing from the energetic and intuitional levels. This friendship is unconditional and eternal. The greater the mutual service, the deeper the friendship. Why does Jesus have such a wide following? Yogananda suggests it's because he, like the other great masters, is unequaled in his service to humanity. Thus millions have claimed him as their friend. Many of the hymns and gospel songs about Jesus describe him as our friend. If you want to become a true friend, you must recognize that your soul is a real thing, the real you. When you consider yourself as a soul, and you try to live as your soul would have you live, you can become a perfect friend. To the degree you yourself fail to be friendly, you disregard the divine law of self-expansion. And it is that law, self-expansion, by which your soul can grow into spirit, for it is only by expanding ourselves that we can increasingly attune ourselves to spirit. By being true to yourself, to your soul nature, and by being a true friend to others, you will gain that truest of all relationships, the friendship of God. A spiritual goal for us to have as we travel this path is to gain friends here on this earth in our day-to-day -day circumstances. To do that, Yogananda says we must manifest friendliness ourselves. To attract friends, we ourselves must be real friends. If we can open our doors to the magnetic power of friendship, Souls of like vibration will be attracted to us. The more friendly we become toward all, the greater will be the number of our true friends. We attract those who are very much like ourselves. That's the law of vibration. That's the law of magnetism. To draw friendly people who want to be your friend, you need to become more friendly, truly friendly exhibiting those qualities of a true friend. True friendship can unite souls so completely that they reflect the unity of divine spirit. When perfect friendship exists, 
either between two hearts or within a group of hearts, perhaps in a spiritual organization like Ananda. Such friendship will help to perfect each individual. When true friendship exists between souls and they seek spiritual love and seek God's love together, when their only wish is to be of service to each other, their friendship produces a flame of spirit. True friendship is broad and inclusive. Selfish attachment to a single individual will inhibit the development of our divine friendship. We must extend the boundaries of our love, gradually expanding them to include all our family, our neighbors, our community, our country, all countries, and all sentient creatures as well. When divine friendship reigns supreme in the temple of your heart, your soul will merge with the divine, leaving far behind the confining bounds which separated it from all of God's creation. God has put forth perfect design and great effort to unite our strife-torn world. That effort manifests itself within your heart as the friendship instinct. Friendship is God's trumpet, sending out the call to eliminate any partitions, any barriers, that separate us from other souls. Let us learn to be cosmic friends, scattering love everywhere. Let us be imbued with kindness and affection for each other and for all of God's creation. In true friendship, we will find God. Good to see you all, friends. My name is Paul, in case you're new here with me, or new and welcome to the temple. And uh, the quote that I, the, of friendship the, and love, that I pick from Master Yogananda, Paramhansa Yogananda, is God's way of about playing hide and seek. And we've already been touching on that with the other uh, things people have shared in the readings. But this is divine love plays hide and seek with us in life, then hides behind the veil of death that we may seek it still and find it in the secret bower of omnipresence. Love leads us through the endless mazes of life and death in order to lead us to the land where perfect love shines in full brilliancy. Indeed, even in death, love lives on. So, I thought we could feel just a little bit uh, taste that. We can actually stay seated. We'll just do a little bit of some stretching with the arms, which facilitate awakening the portals of the heart chakra, since that's where we feel. We can feel God, Divine Mother, most nearest is in our hearts. And then we will offer that, of course, to the, the spiritual eye, the, the portal towards divine freedom and joy. So we can, uh, I'm just gonna come slightly to the side. Let's take our palms in prana mudra. So we're bringing awareness at the heart, the anahata heart chakra. And you can actually for a moment close the eyelids and just open with this sense all the beautiful devotional energy and tension of tuning in to the true friend, the friend of God within we can feel our own friendship and our inter-friendships with all souls. 
Now, if you need, open the eyelids and then inhale. We're going to do circle of joy. Many of you know this. It's very simple. Inhale through the nostrils. Exhale, interlace the fingers. Take the palms forward. And then inhale, lift the arms up. Good. Now just take a pause here. <laughs> Keep the palms at the front ribs soften. And just so you can start to really feel a softening, a thawing out in the heart region. Inhale. Now open the arms nice and wide. I see Ryan's got a heart chakra colored shirt on, which is cool, green. And then in, pretty cool. Then interlace the fingers behind. And then squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other and some other green shirts too. And then lift the heart. So just hold this a little longer than we sometimes do so that we can feel this sense of moving a little beyond the familiar, how we even approximate the heart. Often the heart gets closed off a bit. Inhale and exhale prayer mutra. Okay, let's do this one more time. Inhale through the nostrils, breathe like you're breathing in God's bliss, God's love. Exhale any worries. Inhale, take the palms forward, feel your breathing in light. God's light, God's love, lift the hands up, pause for a moment. Inhale, open the arms slowly this time. Feel that circle of joy, that circle of spirit. Interlace the fingers behind you. Okay, kind of takes a little creativity there with the chairs I released, but realize what you're doing great. Interlace, now open, lift the heart, draw the heart energy to the spiritual eye. Inhale towards the forehead, exhale, prayer mudra. We're just gonna pause here. I won't get too carried away with the breathing since you're all wearing masks <laughs> except me, <laughs> so I just realized, so. Okay, and then take for a moment, though, your hands to the heart. So this is a great way we can just directly access. If, if we're getting a little mental, I know it helps me to just bring a, a awareness, just awareness at the heart. Take the, uh, one of the hands, the fingers to the forehead, and just, so just softly rest the fingers there at, so that we're, Yogananda said the two most important chakras are the, 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 the heart chakra, anahata, and the, the spiritual eye. And it doesn't matter which hand is on which. It's, yeah, it's all good. And, uh, and then just close the eyelids for a moment and draw that awareness of like the rays of the heart light, of the heart chakra, towards the spiritual eye the forehead. Now you can rest the palms on the thighs or junction of thighs and abdomen. Keep the eyelids closed. I'm going to take you through a brief guided visualization to help you go a little deeper in the chambers of the heart chakra. So let's go ahead, lift our shoulder heads and relax old years of karma off of the shoulders like you've maybe moved and you're leaving behind old keys you don't need anymore. Take the shoulders up or old books that are dusty you never bothered to use anyway. And then relax there. Now feel the chest relax and the heart. Very good. Keep the soft gaze forward and slightly lifted. As you breathe in, feel your breathing in light, not just air. Inhale through the nostrils. I know it's maybe a little tricky with the masks, I realize, just do the best you can. And visualize your heart like a lotus and opening its petals and send actually some good friendly energy to your neighbors in this room, okay? Or if you're in your home watching to your neighbors in your neighborhood and just send, extend that sense of goodwill and love to other soul friends. And then let's go ahead and visualize green light, emerald green light expanding from this beautiful flower around it. And then you're opening like this light at the point between the brows. Silvery light is calling you like hide and seek, come, 
Come, go deep within you. Go deep within. Feel the presence within. Imagine now, as Yogananda said, you're un- in bowers in, in the secret. Find it in the secret bower of omnipresence. You're in a secret garden, an astral garden or forest. And you're being sheltered by these beautiful trees curving over like cathedrals, trees, and they're You feel Divine Mother's love and support nurturing you in the shady trees, the shady garden. As you feel, as you breathe, the gentle breezes are of her love caressing and moving through you. You'll know that you're in a very safe place, a garden of omnipresence. Okay, and then visualize at the point between the brows, through the bowers, through the trees, through the green leaves, that there is a beautiful light, as I said, like the sunlight of spirit, and perhaps silvery rays of white shining through it as well. And as you gaze there, The spirit calls you, perhaps visualize one of the masters, one of the avatars guiding you, the omnipresence. Feel this light can move, the rays of this light penetrates all your old karma, all your old luggage and things you carry every day, every life, and it knows you completely and it cleanses and loves you if you allow. And like a tree shedding its bark, imagine that you're releasing naturally as you let the loving light to penetrate your being, your heart, that you naturally shed the bark of old karma. And what remains is this radiant being within you, this radiant being of love. And just feel that. As Yogananda said, then we feel perfect love can shine in full brilliancy and feel divine perfect love filling your body, filling your being, filling your heart and mind. And as if your body drops away and what remains is just pure light within you. Feel that pure love and feel like a spiritual gravity lifting you towards this light beyond the confines, as we say in the festival of light, beyond the earthly confines, soaring in spirit skies, your being, you realize The love you share to others, the love you feel is not just your own. It's been God's love all the time, playing hide and seek with you. And I'll close just reading again. Take it in the spiritual eye. Yogananda's words of hide and seek. Divine love plays hide and seek. And take this to the spiritual eye. Divine love plays hide and seek with us in life, then hides behind the veil of death, that we may seek it still and find it in the secret bower of omnipresence. Love leads us through the endless mazes of life and death in order to lead us to the land where perfect love shines in full brilliancy. Indeed, even in death, love lives on. Om. Peace. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Paul, for that beautiful visualization. So so we have been hearing about uh, the treasures of friendship that we um, have in our lives. But what about that friend that comes in disguise to us? And this is what Master is saying. Remember, 
God is in your enemy just as much as in your friend. When you recognize God in those who love you and in those who hate you, when you see the all-pervading love of God, then you will realize his omnipresence. And um, there's a story of a saint who, um, who had his disciples all around him, but there was this one person who was his harshest critic. And you know, the disciples would carry this, you know, whatever he has said that day about the master, uh, all the harshest things that he has written about him and would relate to the master. And the saint would simply smile. And then one day the disciples came, very happy, master, he has died. Your, your enemy has died. And the master cried. The saint cried and said, oh, I have lost my best friend, the only one who would let me know of my, of my failings, of my weaknesses. And so that is the nature of the, what, we all know this, right? That whatever we experience in our lives is exactly a prescription from Divine Mother. There's no coincidence. Uh, and so similarly, enemies, people who, and we all have them, right? We have in our workplaces, we have among our friends. In fact, um, I was just having a talk a couple of weeks back with a dear friend and she was um, sharing with me how this one particular friend, and I'm saying quote friend because she doesn't think this person to be a friend, would always come after her, criticizing her at every possible opportunity that she's, she was just up here with this person. And there's no way for her to avoid it. And this is what Master tells us when, in, when we find ourselves in these situations, that we don't have to go out of our way to invite enemies in our lives. We don't have to go out of our way to you know, bring in hurdles in our lives. But if they come of their own, let's first accept it. Let it come. Let's accept it with relaxation. Because the first thing we do is we get all tensed up with anxiety and start pushing this experience. That has come from Divine Mother herself. Because we need it. So our first step when we meet difficulties such as these in, 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 in the form of people, um, first see that as an opportunity. And sometimes I can speak for myself. I do not understand the lesson the Divine Mother is trying to teach me. And that's OK. When, if we do understand, because you'll see there are some patterns that we all experience in our lives. We all attract a certain kind of people that push our buttons. And by then, we begin to understand exactly what lesson Divine Mother is trying to teach us. And as we learn, again, I can speak from my experience, they just fall away. They just go away as if they never existed. But then there are these cases I have felt that I do not understand, Divine Mother. What are you trying to teach me? And and then what can we do about those experiences? Just, and this was what I was telling my friend, like she doesn't understand what, why such bitterness towards her. Um, just take that because our first tendency is that energy starts going down and we start feeling low, depressed, angry, anxious. Um, okay, just accept that. And then at the next opportune moment, maybe, and if you meditate, it becomes a little, use, little easier. We have to lift that energy up. And the best way to lift that energy up, uh, as I see it, is uh, just find your love for God first. Just center yourself and find that, you know, that heart and that, that love for God. And that's our carrier wave. And then place that, whatever anxiety, anger, depression you're feeling towards this person, place it on that carrier wave of love. And then allow that, and just offer that to Divine Mother. Feel free to tell her whatever you have on your mind. Like, I do not understand why this is happening. But whatever it is, you know better than me, and I give this to you. And please allow, allow me to learn whatever you are asking me to learn. And as we keep on doing this, offering this back to her, from whom it has come to us in the first place, either it just dissolves away, because maybe that's all we needed to do. Or this whole, uh, we also get a better understanding so we can work towards it. And at the end, um, I'll close with um, 
as we keep on praying, because we all have difficult people in our life, as we keep on praying for them, holding them in the light, uh, we begin to see more and more the play of God in everything, in good and bad. And let that be our prayer, Divine Mother. Let us see you in all aspects of our life, good and bad, in friends and in enemies. God comes to us um, as friends. She gives, Divine Mother gives us her love as friends, and she tests us through the enemies. And we need those tests to grow. So let us relax into those difficult moments of our life. And so I will end um, with the chant. Good morning, dear friends. My name is uh, Arnab, and uh, the quotation I picked for today is, friendship is eternal. If you can form a friendship through which God is awakened in you, that is the greatest of all friendships. And what a wonderful segue from the song and the chant that Padma led us into thousand years are tomorrow. Just yearn and wait to see you. I will read from Letters of Counsel and Reflection uh, in Divine Friendship. This is a collection of letters written by Swami Kriyananda. When we think of a friend, what comes to mind? Someone who doesn't judge us, someone who doesn't react, someone who doesn't have any expectations from us. Their only expectation is to awaken the highest spiritual potential in ourselves. And who better than Swami Kriyananda, the founder of Ananda, and who has embodied that in everything all his trials and tribulations that he dealt with, all the challenges, everything that came his way. Friendship in God was his first and foremost motto and serving master. So the first letter is a response to a person 
who is seeking a perfect mate. It is a mistake to think that you'll ever find the perfect mate. Life, outwardly, cannot be other than compromise between the ideal and reality. This is true in every walk of life, even in the ashrams of saints, for the world is limited, relative, and otherwise conditioned in countless ways. Seek perfection, therefore, within yourself. The more you depend on outer circumstances to give you perfection, the more you'll find disappointment. Remember, too, that your path to perfection depends not only on inner growth, but on the application of that inner growth to outward circumstances. In other words, a relationship that seems lacking in personal fulfillment may be a great spiritual blessing for the opportunity it gives one to be a channel for divine love and service to help the other person. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Service and sacrifice, not outward fulfillment, are the essence of spiritual development. And he ends by saying, relationships aren't created. They exist already. So everything that we have, everything that comes to us, is really an opportunity. God gives us exactly what we need for our own growth. Every obstacle, every enemy, like Padma was talking about, they are gifts to us. So we can accelerate our path to finding our own homes. Now, <laughs> we have a few minutes. I'll share a joke, and this has nothing to do with friendship, but kind of related. <laughs> So I had a friend, you know, this was when I, my first job in India, and he used to drive his, like, motorbike extremely fast. Like, he would go at, like, 110 kilometers an hour. And, and I asked him, hey, why do you drive so fast? And he said, the faster you drive, the less amount of time you'll be on the road. Therefore, the chances of getting into an accident is low. <laughs> So I, I, I thought of this and I said, okay, this is a wonderful, you know, uh, like an anecdotal kind of a you know, thing for today. Because if you think of our path to truth, right, all the obstacles and all of these things that come, think of the equivalent if, is driving fast. The more we get those enemies in our life, the more we grow, the faster we get out of this. So the chances of more accidents are less. I don't know if it made sense, but I just wanted to share that. Uh, so the second letter is a little longer. And this is somebody asking uh, Swamiji, how should we relate to you, Swamiji? And he's, he, he gives an explanation. This is the second half of it. And he says, having stressed my friendship for you and the importance of this role for both teacher and student, it is important for me to make clear the further truth that friendship is only that it is important for me to make clear the further truth that friendship is only a preliminary attitude. It would be a great mistake to leave this teaching on a merely personal human level, lest love becomes emotional and colored by attachment. The real point I'm reaching for goes much deeper than that. I've said that I like to see myself as your friend, but by friendship I mean primarily friendship in God. Indeed, what I try to be to you is, as I said earlier, a channel for his love. For neither you nor I exist except as shining bubbles in his one ocean of light. Who indeed is loving whom? Is it all, it is all God loving himself in his myriad outward disguises. So what's an enemy and what's a friend? It's all his reflections. We are all the same. The, the deep truths for which we in our sadhana are reaching are all impersonal. The trick is to realize that in their impersonality, they are not in any way cold or abstract. 
that love is the more that love is the more loving for being impersonal for being freed that is to say from the constriction of petty selfhood and selfishness thus a basic attitude of friendship serves the higher end of helping us to develop attitude of love loving self giving in our relationship with god without such attitudes high yogic aspirations will ever remain unfulfilled and the austere impersonality the yogi works on developing remains joyless and dry in my relationship with master as swami ji is saying i would sometimes find him very distant and impersonal at first seeing him thus i thought he was being cold in time however i discovered that when he was offer what he was offering to me and to all of us was the perfection of our human relationship with him never a denial of it far from rejecting our love he was offering it to god alone where it truly belonged and thus giving us the chance to discover through our relationship with him a relationship a million times more beautiful than anything merely human friendship you see is right spiritually speaking only when it seeks its perfection in god's impersonal love were i to give you my friendship only as a human being and to seek your friendship in return only for myself i would be betraying the charge i have been given to serve you in master's name sometimes indeed when perhaps i have seemed distant to you or even severe i know that some of you have felt hurt with me and have wondered if i really did love still love you as a friend i myself in my human nature regret it deeply when i must speak strongly to you but it is my very friendship to you that makes me speak in whatever manner i sense will be the most helpful to you at the same time i also see friendship as only a doorway to the higher impersonal love of god how could it be otherwise when what we want as yogis is the end of our egos thank you in divine friendship blessings to all thank you everyone who spoke so beautifully and shared so so from the heart uh i just want to close with a very brief quote and with a chant of yogananda ji's be a cosmic friend imbued with kindness and affection for all of god's creation scattering love everywhere and we'll chant uh thou art my life it's a beautiful chant and i would invite you to try to feel as you're chanting the the sweetness of god's love in the form of the divine friend
let's stand, send out the blessings that we've received through our time together to all the world. Oh. Oh.